still, they said. You're supposed to be still. Like I didn't know. Like I was new to the job. Like I didn't know what a living statue was. Like as if it wasn't hard enough being Henry VIII's second wife, six-fingered witch and glorified pigeon perch, I had to see that. Them. Him, my ex, and her, little Miss Perfect. Love's young dream. Except, he's in his fifties, and she's hardly a spring chicken. I used to be Victoria, longest reigning queen, until ours, obviously. The people loved me because I was good. Like, eyes front, totally still, not blinking, barely breathing. You put up with all sorts. Drunks, ridicule, spit, deep vein thrombosis, but I made a good living. Men would doff their caps and little girls would curtsy while mums threw change into my spare crown. It, I was quits in. It was great. And then along came Henry flaunting his beer belly and love of executions. He had a kind of magnetism. He couldn't say no. It was his idea for us to team up. You're too tall to be Victoria, he said. I ignored him at first, but he kept on. Too tall. He said, too thin, he said, too pretty. I managed not to smile, you know, stay in character. And then, you're too bloody lovely to be that old trout. Do you fancy a drink? Well, it was the end of a long day and time to pack up. So I said, why not? Long story short, one thing led to another and then one day, while I was trying very hard to ignore someone's pissing spaniel who was draining the contents of their bladder onto my gown, Henry got down on one knee and proposed. Not in real life, no. He wanted me to be his Anne Boleyn. Yeah, me. I'm too old, I said. Nonsense, he said. He cut off her head, I said. A mistake, he said. I'd rather be Jane Seymour, I said. She's the one he really loved. Who's she? he said. And you know what? He wasn't the brain of Britain, but he had a certain charm. And yeah, flattery can take you places you never dreamed of going. So I had a bit of a makeover. Ditched Vicky's wig, her ample clothing and foam padding and got myself a new me. I looked 30 years younger. We set up shop as, debatably, the world's most famous royal couple, and it worked. The people loved us. Our tins filled with coins and notes, our stony hearts filled with joy and pride. And then one night, under the full moon and starlit sky, 
we became more than historical statues. Henry said he loved me. I loved him back. We wanted a life together. He wanted a family. I didn't have much time. You know, the clock was ticking. But I said yes. I want a boy, Henry said. I want a boy, a son and heir, a little prince. And we were happy. So, so happy. That's why I didn't see it coming. It, in case you were wondering, was Marilyn Monroe, queen of the silver screen and brazen as brass. She had the pitch opposite ours. Drew the crowds. I didn't complain. Takings went up, all good. And then one day, she was gone. And Henry with her. So much for a life together. Well, I've just seen them draped over the steps of the town hall. And who gave them permission anyway? It's a public building where local government officials are supposed to listen to community views on public issues. Not a love nest for adulterous living statues. But then, Henry always did what he wanted, sod everyone else. He's still the same old Henry. But you'll never guess. She's Jane bloody Seymour. Bastards! At least I didn't lose my head completely.